really small presentation to take you through, just to pick out the, the key the key parts of the report. But before we before we do that, we do have um, audit. Um, David's going to have a um, talk to you. Yesterday, we sent out the OAG finalised the wording of the audit opinion yesterday, and so what we sent that to you when it was ready to be circulated together with uh, with a closeout report. Um, so we'll have um, we'll ask both David and Armin just to. Quickly talk to that. Um, we'll assume we we'll, won't we'll assume that you've read it because it came out late. Um, just in terms of a formality, the long-term plan document that you've seen in part one, there's a placeholder for the audit opinion. Um, you, when you adopt the long-term plan today, you uh, you adopt a long-term plan that includes the signed audit opinion. So, um, audit need to make sure that you are aware of the opinion and then when you adopt the long term plan the um, what will be delegated to the, the chief executive, um, the mayor, deputy mayor and various councillors will be to make that minor editorial change which will be to insert the signed audit opinion into the long term plan. So um, in terms of procedure we'll, we'll hear from audit, um, you can ask audit your questions, we'll quickly run you through the presentation and then hopefully at the end go through the recommendations. Um, I'd like to hand over to David Borry and Ahmed Sophie from Ernst & Young. Thanks Mark and um, good morning everyone. Um, I'd like to, to start with, uh, with a thank you to the, the management team. So developing a, a 20 year plan takes a significant amount of time and effort and there's a group of staff at uh, Council that have worked tirelessly over the past year to develop the, the plan. Over and above that, uh, they've still found the time to support our program of audit work and that's very much appreciated. So uh, a thank you to the, uh, the group of the management team that have, that have covered that. Um, the next piece was that I just wanted to give a little bit of context to the letter that's been circulated along with our uh, opinion on the LTP given it's uh, a brief document. For context, the majority of our underlying audit work over the assess information, the approach to, to funding, the plans and the strategies uh, was all completed prior to the consultation document uh, being finalised uh, and we reported to, to Council on that in March. Our audit work that's been completed since that point in time is primarily focusing on the changes that have been made and also, also working our way through the, the long-term plan document, which is obviously a large document, and ensuring consistency within that document in terms of consistency of, of message. The opinion that's appended to the, the letter includes two emphasis of matter paragraphs and a qualification and just wanted to give a bit more uh, detail around those. So the two emphasis of matter paragraphs are consistent with the emphasis of matter paragraphs that were included in our opinion on the consultation document. And they effectively draw readers' attention to the appropriate disclosures made in the long-term plan document regarding uncertainty associated with reform of the, the three waters and also the delivery of the, the large program of, of capital works. The qualification relates to the assumed level of Waka Kotahi funding, where new information has become available since the consultation document was issued. Waka Kotahi made indicative decisions regarding Kapiti District Council's funding for roading for the next three years in May of this year. And this indicative funding was at a level $3.9 million below the funding that's been assumed in the prospective financial statements that appear in the long-term plan document. And from our perspective or the view that we took was that that indicative, indicative funding that was provided by Wakakotahi in May was the best available uh, information for those underlying statements. And that's explained in the, the qualification to the, to the opinion. Um, wanted to 
pause there maybe and see if there were particular questions that uh, council members had. Right. Um, thank you for taking the time to be with us and given the slight delay in the process that we followed. Um, the question that I've got to ask is the issue of you know the impact of the national policy statement on urban development, the funding issues with Kotahi, Waka Kotahi, and also the three waters uncertainty and our ability to deliver on our projected capital expenditure. Are this sort of, am I correct in saying that this is not endemic to the Kabari Coast, but it's a problem being faced by all councils right across the country? Uh, in short, yes, that's, um, that's correct as far as those being issues. Also worth pointing out that to some extent there'll be a level of consistency in audit opinions across councils. To start with, I can confirm that all councils across New Zealand will have an emphasis of matter in their opinion with respect to the uncertainty around three waters reform. Um, whilst ability to deliver capital work program is something that varies from one council to the next, worth noting that there are a number of councils that are planning a really significant um, program of capital works over the, the near term, and where possible, audit service providers have tried to be as consistent as possible um, in including emphasis of, of matters and opinions. So where there are councils with similar circumstances in terms of large capital work programs, um, we've tried to uh, uh, ensure consistency in, in audit opinions. Thank you. Um, questions? Doesn't seem to be any questions, so... So, thank you very much for the time that you've taken. Thank you. Have you got anything else to say, though? That's the question from Chief Executive. No? Sorry, there's nothing further from me. Okay. Thank you very much again. Okay. So, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, we might just um, take you through the very short uh, presentation. If we could just load that, please, Grayson. So, I think, um, as I said, given it's a 34-page report, um, Nothing in that report would have been new or would have been a surprise um, to the table, but um, what we wanted to just quickly uh, land on is um, the process of how we got to where we are today, um, talk about our consultation, public voice, the recommendations and um, the uh, audit or OAG opinion, which effectively you've just done. So actually quite a lot of this presentation has been discussed this morning anyway, so I'll go through it lightning fast. So um, look, there's a lovely, lovely slide on, on, on uh, the journey that we've travelled together. Um, everyone's been involved, boots and all. There have been um, strategic workshops um, with yourselves. There have been public workshops, um, lots and lots of workshops. Um, just thinking of the last two, um, the 27th of May, we're scheduled to finish at 8. I think we left here at 9.30pm. You wanted to get through everything. With a few days break and a pause and we started again on the 1st of June to reflect and we discussed and, and, and revisited a number of things. So um, so we've been together in this chamber many, many, for many, many, many hours and, and had great conversations. So um, that's the process, that's the journey we followed. We've um, you know done a head of consultation document, we've been working with audit um, and, and we've actually got to the finish line today. So um, a fantastic achievement. In terms of our consultation, uh, we consulted from the 7th of April to the 10th of May. Um, we received 741 submissions. Um, all, of, all of this you are well aware of. You've read the 741 submissions. Our hearings took place from the 17th to the 19th of May, where you listened to 92 people speaking to their submissions. Again, I think those hearings went late into the night too. We um, used Public Voice, an independent um, entity, to um, help us collate and analyse 
for those submissions. Um, I'm glad we did that with 741. It needed to be done independently. It needed to be done by an outfit that was was highly skilled at actually um, collating and summarising um, what that community was, was saying. And, and that was presented to you initially by way of a summarised report um, as you led into the, into the public submission hearings. And then a final report was issued um, just, just, just after, I think, the first um, or, the, or the 27th of May public workshop. Both the summarised report and the, and the final report are available to the public on our website. So the recommendations, I, I really will, um, <clears throat> this is all set out in the report and I'll go through this really quickly, I, try, I won't sort of um, go over anything that you don't already know, but in, in essence what we consulted on, we got a steer from the community that we're on the right track, um, the priorities were correct, uh, we should invest for resilience and growth. Our financial um, strategies and infrastructure strategies were endorsed, um, we're going to, we're going to um, uh, uh, the financial strategy gives effect to the infrastructure strategy. The infrastructure strategy enables us to look after our assets. Our big issues, um, we're endorsed by the community, major projects and initiatives. We told um, our community what our major projects and initiatives are. We didn't specifically ask for feedback. We did get some comments on some. And our big decisions, our key decisions, um, and you can see at the bottom um, certainly what we're recommending to you based on the analysis and based, based on the feedback from our community is yes, the council should take a bigger role in housing. Yes, we should renew the Paikakariki seawall a different way with elements of the old design. Um, yes, we should set up a council controlled organisation. We should explore ways to have a role in the airport. This is obviously a high summary. Uh, changes to the rating system, um, we, um, we, we've reported back that generally the feedback wasn't so much in response to the changes that we were proposing to the rating system, it was don't increase rates. We know that the changes to those rating systems are making it um, a fairer system, making it more equitable, it transfers some of the burden <coughs> away from the residential sector that the district wide valuation put onto the sector. So we're recommending that we do make those changes. Um, that's why we review that system, to make it as fair and equitable as possible. The user fees and charges, there's some new fees that came in and we spoke at the, um, the last two workshops about uh, proposed new fees um, for the aquatics, the spectator fee and a $1 lane hire fee. And direction from, from the table was not to include those and we have not. In terms of our policies, we've made a change to the revenue and financing policy. We've introduced a range, so since we went out to consultation, we've spoken to you about rentals um, regards um, our, our housing for older persons. We increased the range in the revenue and financing policy. It was 80-20 um, uh, pr uh, uh, private public funding. We changed that range to 55-80. to 80. Um, we uh, are intending on uh, having a briefing with you next week where we'll take you through the impacts of um, today the fees and user charges are setting the fees to recover 80% of the costs and next week you will have a briefing on um, you know, what impact that has on, on our tenants in terms of the accommodation supplement. So as the report says it's still subject to final, uh, final uh, review from yourselves. Um, but we did result, it has resulted in a change to the revenue and financing policy from the consultation document stage. We increased that range 55 to 80%. The, infra the rates remission policy, um, no changes to that. Just a reminder for the consultation period, you did actually increase the rates remission by $50,000 and you've held that. The development contributions policy, there's been some um, minor editorial changes. A HUI's changed to a RUI. And, um, the significance engagement, there was no feedback from, there's no public consultation that said that um, anything needed to change. So, so very minor changes to our policies that we're, um, we're uh, asking for your adoption today on that. They form part of the long-term plan. Levels of service, um, that's to do with the um, recycling facility. We all, um, we've spoken about that already. Um, in terms of rates for 21-22, so we have landed with all the adjustments, the ins and outs that we've made, um, average rates increase for 2021-22 is 7.79%. Um, 
Again, we're obviously proposing to proceed with that based on the based on the adjustments that we've made. And of course, the opinion. So, two emphasis of matters which remain exactly the same as the consultation and the qualification that we've received for the Wakatahi funding. Uh, we don't want that to overshadow. Um, part one is 387 pages. Part two is probably 250 pages. It's a it's a it's a huge document. It's a huge amount of work's gone has been done by yourselves, by council officers, and um, looking forward to proceeding to the recommendations. Right, I'm signaling that I'm going to move the resolution, but before then, question time. Any questions? Councillor Holliday. Through you, Mr Mayor. Um, I don't have a lot of questions um, um, in regards to this. We've been through a process, um, but there were two things I just wanted to um, touch on. Um, you made reference, Mark, to um, older person housing. Um, I know it's a little bit more applicable to the fees and charges aspect of things, but it is at number 84 on page 25. So I wanted to bring in the conversation. Look, um, we discussed with regards to um, the setting of the, um, the, the rent, the new rents, um, um, and um, there was information that was going to come back to us about that, which um, we haven't received. But I am under the impression while, um, that we're having a briefing on this next week around that. And um, I'm comfortable where we're going with that because we have discussed this uh, and I brought my concerns to you um, around that. Um, but um, I guess the assurance I really wanted in that space, um, and it alludes to what Councillor McCann was talking about with, with, through the process, was these are our vulnerable people and that um, whatever uh, outcome we are looking at, uh, we are going to set the um, rent, which is going to be higher than what it currently is, but we're looking at offsetting that with uh, accommodation supplement, uh, and that we will be holding the hand of those people uh, through that process, and hopefully um, incorporating it as part of the process of people actually gaining that, those uh, rentals as well. Would you, that be a fair comment? All of that's correct, Councillor. Um, as you just heard Mark say uh, next week, You'll get a, a more detailed briefing on it. Um, if we cut to the chase, certainly looks to us that the, um, the recommendation to go to 80% of cost um, is achievable and um, is reasonable for the tenants. And in simple terms, um, whilst their rent may go up by $52, they'll get $49 back from the accommodation supplement. So actually, their rent increase may only be $3 a year, mm. uh, a, a week. Well, <laughs> a year, that would be nice. Um, so I didn't want to give away all the um, information for next week because we need to go through it at a sort of a granular level, but it certainly looks from our analysis that it's a good outcome for everybody. Uh, I agree. Um, I just didn't. I, I know there can be concern out in the community around this particular topic, so I just wanted to get some clarity on that. Uh, the only other question I just wanted to um, just get a little bit of clarity is actually on a financial question. It's on page 227 of the report. Apologies, but um, it talks about community facilities. We have a district-wide housing renewal line in there, which um, I'll perhaps give you a second just to get to it. Oh, actually, it's not on 227. It's for my apologies, I got the uh, page incorrect on that one. Um, must have been on the, um, on the other report. Uh, it was referring to the um, district-wide housing renewals line in the community facilities part of the report. My apologies for not being able to get the correct... What report am I in? I just wanted to get clarity on what um, district-wide housing renewals were. Uh, to be honest, because uh, it was a fairly substantial figure in an ongoing way. Chief, Chief the Executive. So that's the refurbishment of the existing units based on asset management planning and the scheduling that we've got. We've been doing it for well, probably five years now. Yeah. Um, I think we've done about 40 units, so it's largely that. Uh, a big part of it in the coming year will be the healthy homes compliance, the likes of um, installation of, of heat pumps and things. So that's fundamentally in relation to that same housing. The uh, it's our existing portfolio. It's renewals. Yep. Yeah. So it's 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 um, getting them up to spec a, a based on their age and stage. Condition. Oh, that's cool. I thought that might be the case. Based on some clarity. Thank you very much. Council Goods. Page twenty-six uh, D. 
the climate initiatives capex could staff just confirm that the the addition to the 150,000 uh, around the climate related initiatives was in response to the closure of the um, through debate with elected members around the closure of the Waikanae recycling facility it was and that remains in it has remained in thank you I had a question about recommendation 137 or something that a few of us have been quite confused about. Was it who did the selection, what was the selection process for the five people, the six people able to make amendments to the LTP document? That's the, that's the mayor's call. Any other questions? Councillor Holborough. Yes, yeah, so I'm just, I'm just double checking um, that the names that are in the resolutions are the correct names because the chair of strategy and operations is missing from the body of the report. Your your name you're still there in the recommendations. Actually, there's a little inconsistency. I just wanted to double check on. So through you, Mr. Mayor, look, the recommendation is is correct. Um, so then, the body of the report. I'm just looking for the paragraph. It, it'll it'll simply it'll simply be an error. They should be they should be correct. We um, we did go back to correct it, but we obviously missed um, Councillor Coote's apologies for that. But um, the recommendation is correct. That is the editorial committee at the mayor's request. Councillor McCann. Through you, Mr. Mayor, did the Mayor check with my former English teachers who are currently spinning in their grave reading Recommendation 137? I'm sure the answer is no. Councillor Coates, you've got another question. Uh, it's not a question. I note, um, Your Worship, that you were looking to move the recommendations, which I think is appropriate as the person who leads the process. Um, I had proposed to additional recommendations for your consideration. If you're happy to move them, I don't really care who seconds them, um, as long as someone does. Um, but at your, um, in your hands in terms of when that is discussed or added. I'm happy to second all the recommendations, including those two. We'll, we'll add those to, uh, I'll move those extra uh, recommendations to that. And um, can I just say then, um, I'm moving recommendations 122 to, what's the numbers? 138. One, well, 139, really. Yep. Uh, 138, the Mayor writes to Waka Kotahi, the Minister of Transport and the Minister of Local Government, to outline Council's concerns, uh, hello, thanks a lot, around underfunding Council's local road maintenance program and the implications created by the timing of Waka Kotahi's decision coming out after the development of Council's 2021-41 long-term plan. That's 138. 139, the Council thanks staff for their work in developing the 2021-41 long-term plan. Okay, then, and um, the recommendation 122 to 139 moved by the Mayor and seconded by Councillor Holborough. Uh, right of introduction. Um, I've been elected member, Councillor, Mayor, now four terms. This is the fourth term. This process has been the most challenging ever. By the same token, I think the staff had risen to the challenge really well. What we don't under may not understand is while the um, elected members in the public are dealing with the process as what I would call the tip of the iceberg, under that tip has been a huge amount of work done by the um, elected, I mean, 
the management, um, the chief executive, thank you very much for the team, Mark and Allison, for the amount of work that you've gone into this. Uh, the process has been quite stellar and smooth. And I must also congratulate the elected members, the councillors, particularly the new councillors, for whom this would have been a new process, also a challenging process given the challenging circumstances we've got to go through. And so well done on that. And this is uh, really a significant move. And the um, I like the fact that we have gone and taken the bull by the horns and said, look, in response to the government's challenge that uh, local governments also need to um, front up in terms of the investment in capital projects to enable the economy to keep humming. Uh, we have done that along with other councils, other councils around the country. So well done to everybody, really. I now open the session to a debate. Anybody else? Councillor Holbro. <coughs> Yes, um, I'd, I'd like to add a few acknowledgements. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the over 700 submitters who made submissions into this process, and particularly those who came and spoke in support of submissions. Many of those who spoke had never come to council before, and I'd like to actually acknowledge um, Councillor Elliott too for her instigation in making the chambers a more welcoming space during those hearings, which were very productive this time. And what I noticed about the submissions this time was that they were all really well thought out and they all addressed, well most of them addressed most of the issues or a number of issues rather than being requests for funding or single issue submissions. So it wasn't just the number of submissions that was you know, over and above previous long term plans and this is my fifth long term plan as, a, as a, either a community board member or a councillor. So, um, yeah, so I, I just think that was so valuable and there was so much collective time put into those submissions. I think that's worthy of mention today. I'd also like to thank the work of the community boards with their submissions. Some of those community boards did their own consultation to feed into those submissions as well. And one of the really good things about the community board submission this time was that there was early engagement that even happened before we came into the workshop phase or into the submission phase. And that just didn't happen with the community boards but also with the wider community. And I think the quality of that pre-engagement even before we got into the long-term plan process was, in, was over and above anything that we've had in the past by quite a margin. So I think that needs to be acknowledged today. And it's my great pleasure to support this long-term plan. Thanks to staff, thanks to my fellow elected members. And um, yeah, onwards and upwards for the next 20 years. Councillor Elliot. Um, thank you. Um, this has been a very long process and uh, throughout it I have been looking for evidence of the case for the timing of proposed uh, infrastructure jobs and the proposed rates increase, particularly in the 2021 to 24 section of the LTP. In fact, the more I looked for evidence in support of the timing, the more I found evidence against the timing. Um, this period coincides with massive uh, sector uncertainty with the LG review the RMA reforms and the three waters restructuring and all that restructuring is a very slow beast um, and this restructuring is on an unprecedented level. I am comfortable myself sitting at at least the first year of these three without any major commitment to a major investment, the level of debt and the level of additional rates cost for our ratepayers. We are in a post-COVID, we are in a a real COVID situation here still. And the Gateway case is an example. Um, the evidence for timing is, is not there. Um, when the tourism experts even have predicted a five year hiatus before a return to anything like pre COVID visitor numbers. Um, so, looking at submissions, 741 submissions, not a single one supported the closure of the Waikanae Recycling Facility. And to quote a submitter, closing this facility is nothing more but pollution swapping. 
really disappointing when um, the infrastructure strategy uh, in Appendix 1, pages 16 to 104, there is absolutely no mention whatsoever of councils undertaking to meet the objectives of the Regional Waste Minimisation Plan to reduce waste by one third per person and the cost of doing that activity, which will be significant and, and more significant given the growth and the amount of construction that we're expecting. Not a mention. Out of all those respondents, 57% of respondents rightly accepted, um, did not um, accept the need for an increase in this level of their household rates in this figure. COVID recovery is proving to be, as predicted by international uh, experts, a long process, a Nike-shaped tick, not a U-shaped recovery, whatsoever at all. The Productivity Index two weeks ago reported a slight raise on short-term predictions, but is still well below long-term predictions. So no, I'm not supporting this level of rates increase in this LTP. But lastly, the process. It is my sincere hope that in future when a member of this body uses, quite rightly, uses part 23.3 .3 of their standing orders to put a nom on the table, to put a recommendation on the table for the discussion of this table, because they feel it's important. And that they follow, when they follow LGNZ advice, that the CE follows procedure and actually puts that on the agenda. It would have caused so much less confusion today if everyone had had a chance to read that on the agenda. It wasn't there. And very lastly, I follow another colleague of mine in his email today and I request an apology. And my ability to take, and my taking part in this process with my co-signatories, we have been publicly name called, we've been name called in emails by the CE, I've been name called by the Mayor and I would like a retraction and I would like a written apology for those really unfortunate statements that were made about us. Yeah. Councillor Compton. Um, thank you. So I guess a long-term plan is sort of a, an outcome of this collaborative structure we have on councils where we don't have sort of, I guess, party rooms whipping people and that. So you, you try and get a balance and there's compromises. Um, so there'll be things that you're happy with, there's things that you're not happy with, there's things you sort of accept the necessity of them, but you, you know, they make you a bit uncomfortable. Um, and I think that's sort of the case with this long-term plan. And I think that's reflected in the fact that we're actually, I know it's a its a saying that's used almost to death at the moment, um, and that's a bad pun in itself, but we are living in amazingly uncertain times. Um, and I'm reminded of the quote uh, uh, from Robert Burns, a Scottish poet, which is the best laid schemes of mice and men go off the rye. Um, and looking ahead, we've obviously just in the last few days, um, we were reminded about uh, the power that COVID still has over what we're trying to do in Aotearoa. Um, we've got the Three Waters reform where we're hopefully going to get a bit more clarity on that in the, uh, in the coming months. There's RMA reform, which again, same situation, we're waiting to see what that will look like and the impact that will have on councils. There's the uh, local government review. So there's a pretty substantial body of stuff that's coming down the pipeline. And actually we've already seen some of it in terms of the, um, the Waka Kotahi funding um, and the shortfall there already is potentially going to have an impact on what we're trying to achieve. So th I guess that um, it makes it difficult for this sort of planning f arrangement, but um, we've also been told we've got to plough ahead and do our best, and I think that's what we've sort of achieved here. Um, one of the things I'm actually really excited about in this long-term plan is what we're looking at doing around uh, social and affordable housing and how we can actually help play a bigger role in that and um, help the supply of it. And I think um, Councillor McCann really needs to be um, thanked for his uh, work and his advocacy in this space. He's done an amazing job. And I think uh, the fact that there was uh, good community support for it and that we're going to have that additional funding to look at um, strategic land purchases to support that is fantastic. Um, because it won't have escaped anyone's attention that Carpety is not only topping regional lists in terms of our median house prices, we're actually topping lists for Aotearoa. And that puts enormous pressure on Kwano. And this is all before Transmission Gully has opened, um, Pika Pika to Ōtaki, when that eventually opens, that's going to transform it. And I'm not under any illusions that what we're doing is going to solve the housing crisis in Kapiti, but it will make an incredible difference 
for the families who are able to access more social and affordable housing as a result of that. I'm also obviously very excited about the uh, feasibility study funding for the indoor sports centre in year two. You know, fingers crossed it survives contact with the enemy in next year's annual plan. Um, but I'm reminded in 2019 of when I went to a meeting at uh, Connect Church with a whole lot of representatives of the various um, sporting codes that use indoor facilities. And there was one parent there who was talking about taking their daughter down to the Wellington indoor sports facility in Rongatai every morning so they'd leave before 5 a.m go there, do their stuff, and then they had to rush to get back up here in time for school each day. Now, it's a feasibility study. That doesn't mean that it's going to come back and say, yes, let's do it. It might say there are different options, um, and I'm very cognizant of that fact. Uh, but it's really important to start getting people's minds focused on what the possibilities could be, and it will help give those uh, various indoor sporting codes, I guess, a bit of momentum and something for them to coalesce around as well. Now, the other big elephant in the room, hopefully not too big or it won't take off, is obviously the airport. Um, and what we're agreeing to today is to explore <coughs> options on what might be available to us as a council to play a role in it. You know, we're not expressing a view on whether we'd like there to be an airport or not, um, because this is actually about giving us that information to make an educated decision on that, and whether it's actually possible for it, because it is owned privately. And so I guess I'd just say to members that when it comes to assessing those options, and when we go out and consult to our community on them, we need to be really aware of what the, um, the trade-offs are going to involve, what are the other possible ways that we could meet some of those needs. There's a whole lot of things. It's an amazingly complex issue. And um, by looking at our options, it's going, to, I guess, it's going to help us actually understand what we could actually do in that space, if we can do anything. And I think that's actually an important conversation to have. It's one our community has asked us to have as well. So I support that as well. And I guess finally, most of all, obviously, in line with the recommendations here, thanking our staff for their work on this, um, thanking our EWI partners for their participation throughout this process, which has been fantastic. Um, I felt my fellow elected members, both at the council and the community boards, for their role in this. Um, and most importantly, all, of course, our community for what they've done, not just in terms of their submissions, but talking to us at our various pop-up events and all that. Um, it's obviously, this is effectively a 12-month process. And it's, sort of, it's nice to be at the finish line. And I'm looking forward to us getting on and delivering the stuff that's in this. Councillor Hanford. Yeah, kia ora. I'd just like to echo um, Councillor Compton's thanks and also um, kind of, I guess, state how momentous this feels, particularly for me being 20 now and in 2040, I'll be 40. And so it's, it seems like a massive, by the time this will, this will come to the end of this long-term plan, um, I'll be only 40, so potentially still one of the younger councillors around the table, um, <laughs> if I'm still here in 20 years' time. But it, it does it does kind of um, bring that extra I don't know heightened level of, of hopefulness, but also um, yeah kind of a c concern about the future. Um, and I think that was that was kind of shown by the young people that came and spoke with us, who had some real well really well articulated concerns. But also when we asked them what they were hopeful for and hopeful about in the future, they were also able to articulate that really clearly. So. I would like to thank them, thank the young people, the students from Pakikareki School who submitted, um, and just yeah, really highlighting that this is a long-term plan. It needs to be a long-term plan to ensure that our solutions to the many different challenges that our district is facing, that they're intergenerationally equitable, and that we do truly bring in the voices of our young people in our communities who will ultimately inherit the kapiti that we, we're a part of creating now. So. Um, also echoing Councillor Compton's points around sitting alongside EWI partners, I personally found that very valuable in being able to contribute what I could to this process too and learning from our EWI partners throughout this process. So Ngā mihi nui kia koutou katoa um, e mana whenua um, e iwi and thank you very much to staff. There's so much to be excited about and to be hopeful for but there's also many challenges but I think that this document does sum those up well. Um, just a few things that I wanted to mention on specifics um, the Pākekareki Seawall, it's great to hear and read the commitment to design elements of the originally consented and consulted on concrete wall, and there is acknowledgement of the mahi the design group has done in getting us to this point, so I look forward to seeing how those conversations continue to play out to centre those design elements um, that were originally, had, that the community was originally talked with about, so just looking forward to seeing how that plays out. 
Um, in terms of Fakaro around the airport, I totally call Councillor Compton's points on that as well. And I truly believe that we need to be a part of the wider corridor about the future of the airport land and hapu aspirations. In terms of the airport in the context of our climate emergency, it was great to witness and actually get to fly in what could be the future of aviation in New Zealand, New Zealand's first and currently own electric plane. So um, recognise too that the Mayor was able to fly in that only a few days ago too. I don't think we want to limit ourselves in this corridor, at least you know, we, we really, it feels like if we're thinking about the future of our district, there are some amazing opportunities um, in, in that space. Great to see some more commitment to our villages, in, in particular potentially Rovmati Village, um, in response to the business association's um, request for some kind of funding to work on re-envisioning re and consulting communities about um, local local visions, and so as a response to that, having that ten thousand um, dollars as a, as I guess a contestable fund for um, community business associations or groups um, to do that work is a great start. And to be able to truly honour that, um, we need to be able to see that commitment honoured in some way. So I'm looking forward to seeing how the conversations play out in terms of um, figuring out how our community can be a part of that conversation that we're putting some money towards, um, and also seeing how we commit commit to that um, potentially in the next annual plan or following long-term plan. Um, so looking forward to more conversations about that and honouring our commitment and the necessary, I guess, re-envisionment of Raumati Village and reinvigoration of Raumati Village. Um, just some quick comments around our climate commitments. Um, great to see the climate emergency action framework be consulted on alongside the long-term plan and I'm advised that this is coming back to Council at the end of July. So thank you to the Kapiti Climate Change Action Group low carbon carpety, um, our many young people who came in and spoke um, in support of climate mitigation and adaptation, um, also namely the Youth Council who spoke on that. So there's still some mahi to be done um, in that space, but having the Our Climate Future exhibit at Coastlands was awesome and bringing our community into that corridor, so thanks to also the Ministry for the Environment for, for that um, as well. And um, good specific climate commitments I see, but just making sure that it's overarching and climate considerations being on the agenda templates will help with that. Great investment for youth. Um, that extra $50,000 for an Ōtaki youth space, extra $50,000 to social investment fund, and the Youth Council is really happy with this investment. So overall, I think some really, some really big wins that we should be proud of, that we should um, champion in our community and make sure our community is aware of um, what's coming and and these these changes. So yeah, it's been a pleasure to be a part of of my first ever long term plan process. Um, and thank you for making it an enjoyable experience to to be a part of and to feel like I could actually contribute something. Kia ora. Council holiday. <coughs> um, thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor. I'm sorry, I'm a paper person, not a screen person. Uh, look, look, certainly endorse um, Councillor Compton's and Hanford's comments. Uh, I'd also like to thank and acknowledge staff, officers, iwi, councillors and community for their effort and fortitude with regards to the long-term plan process and its outcomes. Look, I have personally found this a hugely informing process and a robust process that gives a strong foundation and framework moving forward. Um, key to delivery, in my opinion, will be uh, partnership, communication and in the doing of. Um, some key points for me, um, that housing is a focus and that council is an enabler, among other things how we look after and develop our older person's housing space. Our relationship with Māori, in my opinion, um, it currently has challenges that need to be addressed and understood, and understood and addressed. Um, our efforts moving forward in waste minimalisation, recycling, upcycling, being effective in this space, and changing mindsets as well. Uh, tourism being addressed through the destination plan and ED, ED strategy, and the implementation of the EG strategy in general. I also want to acknowledge the importance of community boards, and I think that's an area that can be greatly built on in their connection and their strong connection, um, and I uh, acknowledge Councillor Hulborough's um, views around the um, input pre-consultation um, and the connection between Council and its community. I want to acknowledge that we are and will be in challenging times. There is uncertainty, COVID, housing, growth, and massive regulatory, regular, regulatory change coming down the pipeline. But I look forward to us all working together and give this document. Uh, I look forward to us all working together and giving this document and plan the respect that is due uh, in achieving its co Um Thank you very much. Councillor Coates. 
Thank you, Worship. Yeah, look, I'd just, um, like to start by acknowledging all the work uh, from staff and elected members. And as Councillor Holborough said, those members of the community that participated in the process as well. Um, uh, Totoka, the comments from Councillor Compton, um, particularly around the work from Councillor McCann in the housing space. Um, certainly seen Rob working hard in that um, space and, and making a difference um, with key people within the community that um, are committed to try and help addressing that issue. Um, the read an article recently for the Ōtaki Today and in it I said this is, uh, Councillor Holbrook said it's uh, her fifth, it's my fifth LTP as well and the hardest, um, not specifically because of the content of it but it from an Ōtaki perspective impacting on Ōtaki more this time round than any other time um, due to a lot of circumstances outside of our control with the rampant increase in house prices um, reflecting in such a big increase in terms of the level of rates there for all tacky residents. And that was hard because there wasn't actually uh, a lot I could um, do about that. Um, but what I do want to do is acknowledge um, the support from my fellow elected members around the uh, $50,000 increase in the rates for emission that I proposed, also the $50,000 in the social investment fund, ring fence for all tacky, and the $50,000 for the youth space um, as well in response to that. Um, and so I appreciate your support. Um, we heard through the submissions the importance um, to those in the community about um, supporting the vulnerable and I think that'll go some way towards doing that. And that being said, I do want to also um, acknowledge that when you look through the document, there's something in there for everyone. At a, at a larger level, there's the seawall in Paikakariki. There's the community centre and the work in McLean Park as a couple of examples in the Parapara Umu area. There's the library for Waikanae, which I know um, they've been waiting patiently for and is a significant investment into that area. And there's the approach um, around the Ōtaki community facilities as well as the other funding I mentioned there for Ōtaki. So, um, you know, there is something in there for everyone. Um, we can't do everything all at once, um, but I do want to um, just acknowledge that um, there are some significant projects there right across the district. And um, it's been a lot of work, um, but we've got there. And I think that in general, as Councillor Compton has said, you won't necessarily agree with everything, but I think overall we've done a good job. So that's it from me. Councillor McCann. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as those of you know, I'm a cricket fan, so it was an incredibly exciting morning. And I know I don't show it right now, but this is this passing this um, LTP is actually more exciting and that is because of the support of this council and all the staff to make a significant change in our direction with housing. I'll come to that in a second but I also really want to acknowledge the collegial way that we've all discussed what are really really difficult issues in, in trying to cut um, a small pie to make sure that it delivers for all our, for all our community. I want to acknowledge the staff's work and the councillor's support as we had a massive outreach into our community. It was amazing and there were significant numbers of really well thought out um, proposals from our communities and to, to just uh, continue what Councillor Coates was just saying, some of those we acted upon and when we looked at the need within our Ōtaki community. So it was a really really encouraging uh, and uplifting process that we engaged in. Um, we've acknowledged within, in, within housing um, that the free market is not working and that we as a council need to take a different approach to try and ensure that the housing continuum works. And there has been significant work on that particular project. And while my name has been mentioned a few times, I think it's really important to mention uh, the key staff that have been working on this, Janice, Natasha and Steve, and there are many, many more, um, who have been beavering away in the background the whole time supporting this direction uh, with facts as opposed to uh, fancy words that sometimes I'm accused of making. And I'd really like to mention that it was also my most exciting uh, site visit, because we've done many of those to look at ideas from other councils with Steve and Sophie, you'll understand this, we were driving uh, back from a site visit in an EV and we hit zero 
uh, battery power. So it was really good to see that the Nissan Leaf is as is, is inaccurate as I think they sometimes are because we managed to get through most of Parapara Umun Park. Um, but I also want to thank the councillors behind the scenes, especially Gwyn, Councillor Compton, and all the others who have supported this process because it is, as a new councillor, and hearing from those who have been, uh, as Sophie might say, they're long in the tooth, but those who have been and had experience before will know that changing the direction of council in any particular one area is difficult. So there has been a significant amount of community work and support put in by councillors um, right around this table. But we also need to acknowledge there the, the people in our community, such as the Merrill Task Force, who will feel that they were not listened to when they uh, felt they wanted to be listened to, but their actions have helped get this council to where it is today. So all of those people and all of those uh, members of the community who have submitted on this. Um, so I'm really excited about that project. I think Councillor Compton is quite correct. We're not going to solve that issue, but we can make a really significant difference for many people in our community. I just need to touch on a couple of other things. I'm really proud of the way our councils reacted very quickly. Uh, to uh, the problems that we have with our community centre and making sure that we don't kick that can down the road and that we make sure that we support that aspect of our community. And also, um, sorry, Gwen, I have to agree with you again. I just, rather than repeat the words, those comments about the airport. Huge opportunities in front of us and I'm looking forward to that challenge. Um, but most of all, I want to thank um, all my fellow councillors for the way in which this has been a very enjoyable but challenging process. Um, and I, I think we need to acknowledge that while we don't all agree on everything, that we have behaved respectfully and we've listened to everyone's arguments and then made some tough decisions. So thank you. Councillor Brabanov. Thank you, Mr Chair. So, um, so, so I agree with a lot of the things that the other councillors have said and so I um, we'll keep my comments brief. So this has been a really long process, but it's been a really good process. And, and I suppose firstly, I'd like to thank staff for all the, the hours and the, and the effort and the guidance that they have given us during probably the last six months. And then also to thanking um, my fellow councillors for the way that we have grabbed hold of this process and, um, and really um, turned it into a really good process. Also, too, I'd like to thank um, all our community out there who have, um, I suppose, who are interested in this process, and by that I mean in the number of people who have, who have made submissions. And, you know, when you look at some of the submissions, they were really quite detailed, quite lengthy, so people have actually put a lot of thought into it. And I think, um, I, I think it's important that they felt that they could spend the time and effort to do that, because you know, what they were saying was going to be listened to. Um, so at the end of the day now, um, you know, we're about to vote on this and I think it's a good balance of constraint and growth and um, which is important. So we've heard that people don't, um, you know, can't afford to pay more rates, but I think it's really important to have growth that actually um, develops our area as well, and it, it needs to happen. Um, so I also want to thank my fellow councillors for supporting um, the Waikanae Library. This has been a long um, process to get it to this point in time, and um, it's, you know, it's something that I'm sure that the whole district will actually utilise. I also, um, I think also too, there are some other, as the ward councillor, there are some other exciting activities um, that are planned in Waikanae and in the whole district, but I do want to acknowledge that there are still some in inequities in terms of Waikanae residents paying really high rates. Um, so I will, I will be supporting um, the motions that are before us, and I thank everyone for their involvement. Councillor Buzzell. Thank you. I would just like to acknowledge um, what everybody else has said. It's, it's bang on the mark. This is my second long-term plan process and it has been, it feels like really lengthy but really intense at times and, um, and the workload that's, um, that's expected to, to come out of us um, is massive. So 
um, absolutely appreciate what goes on behind the scenes with staff um, because the little legs are racing around at a hundred knots to um, to keep all this going and keeping us informed, um, answering questions left, right, and centre from um, all eleven of us. So. Um, and including um, community boards. So absolutely um, appreciate the support that they've offered. Also, um, really great to have the input from, um, through our workshops and so forth, through from um, Grey Power and, um, and also our Audit and Risk Committee have come on board, which has been invaluable, some of the input that they've, they've put, on, put in as well. And um, really lovely to hear and feel the, um, the, the input from um, our EWI partners as well, which um, I don't recall being so prevalent in our previous long-term plan. So that certainly, um, certainly changed and enhanced our, our partnership there. Last long-term plan and reflection was um, a lot about um, ED and, um, and our space up here. But this time it's around um, a, a lot of well-being um, sort of aspects, which um, also ties into um, our economic development. But I just uh, really want to show my support to the organisation to actually be able to deliver on this plan. Um, and that, going forward, is probably our biggest concern um, in terms of how this organisation operates and functions and being able to support these um, huge ambitious tasks. So um, yeah, just really, really pleased to sign this off today. Right, I'm just going to check and see whether Bernie or Brian Jackson wants to say anything. Yes, Your Worship. Uh, after Bernie, I'd like to make a couple of comments if I could. Okay then. Um, yeah, my, my comments generally have been said. So. I endorse wholeheartedly Councillor Hanford's points about climate change and the airport. Um, Councillor Halliday's points about the value of community boards and generally what Councillor Pravanoff had just said. So they more or less summarised the points I would have raised anyhow. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Mr Jackson. Uh, Your Worship, um, some comments from someone who's never been involved in this sort of activity. First of all, I'd like to thank you all for having me sit through the whole process, which I've really, really enjoyed. It's given me a totally new respect for the role of council. I've been very impressed with the professionalism and management of staff. The debate by elected members has been really enjoyable. And I think that um, I'm probably reasonably able and qualified to say that uh, I think it's tougher being a mayor than it is a chairman and I think it's tougher being a CEO than a, of a council than of a major company and I think it's tougher being a councillor than a director on a board and what has ended up though to me is a very very good long-term plan and I don't know that we could have done any better. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, that brings us into the debate, if you can call it that. Um, I've got um, also to add the two things. One is uh, significant uh, capacity building for EV partnership that's in this long-term plan that itself will open up new vista and challenges that come with that. So we look forward to that. Um, the other thing, of course, is the thanks due to the auditors, David and Ahmed from Ernest & Young, who have worked diligently with our staff to get this document across the table. With that, um, I'm going to move recommendations 122 to 139, um, moved by with Sophie's command in mind, Mayor and Granddad Guru, <coughs> and um, seconded by Deputy Mayor Holbro. All those in favour say aye. 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 Against? You want, you want that recorded? Okay. The recommendations are passed. Can we give the staff and yourselves a round of applause? 
Thank you very much. Right, quickly going on. The setting of rates and due dates and penalties regime is page uh, 341. You, uh, Mark. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, setting the rates, due dates, and the penalties regime, um, I will. <clears throat> I will take the report as read. In terms of formality, we can't set the rates until such time as the council has adopted the long-term plan. You just have adopted the long-term plan. Um, this is a significant area of audit focus. So, um, in bringing before we bring this report to you, we uh, diligently calculate the rate in the dollar, capital value, land value. Um, we make the adjustments for the differentials. Effectively, this report is a is a mirror image. Of the funding impact statement rating policy, which is which is a, a critical document in the long term plan, it is subject to legal review by Simpson Grierson. So I'm I'm pleased to report that we've had um, sign off and clearance from Simpson Grierson um, since issuing this paper. There's uh, nothing to report um, which suggests that you should not um, set the rates. And I'm very happy to take any questions you may have. Right, questions. Appears to be none. Would somebody like to move recommendation 34 to 37? Yeah. Council Compton, seconded by Councillor Holborough. Right of intro, pass. Um, debate, no. Councillor Holborough. Some, I'll just say something. <laughs> so the setting of rates is always a very difficult task, and it was a real challenge to keep these rates to this level through the consultation process, and we had to make some tough calls in order to do that. So I'd like to acknowledge the work that, that went into that from staff and fellow elected members. And also acknowledge that the setting of rates is always a delicate balance between a rating system that's not overly complex and one where people are paying fairly for the services that they receive. And I think through the extensive rates review that was done through the last long-term plan and through the adjustments that have been made through this long-term plan, we have a pretty good system as rate system goes. So with that, um, it's my pleasure to move this. Thank you. Seconded. Right, uh, recommendation 34 to 37 moved by Council Compton, seconded by Council Holborough. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Those again? Aye. Do you want that recorded? Yes. Bernie, did you get a response from you? Yeah, I said okay, yes. I voted okay. yes. Thank you. It's now carried. We now go to page three hundred ninety. The minutes of the council meeting of twenty seventh May, twenty twenty one. You got one more report. Eight point three. Page two forty eight. Three recent charges. Fees and charges. Yep. Mark, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, um, page 348, fees and charges for the 2021 22 in accordance with the long term plan. I, I will take the report as read, as has already been highlighted. Um, next week, there is a, a briefing planned with um, councillors to work through the rentals for um, regards housing for older persons. The uh, long-term plan that you've just adopted includes the revenue and financing policy that defines your public-private funding splits, which in effect gives effect to the fees and charges. Um, the, we've already, you have already uh, approved the regulatory services fees and charges. Um, this is just actually now approving all the other fees and charges, so um, which is consistent with what's been outlined in the long term plan. Happy to take questions. Councillor Coates. Thank you. I, I just want to check in terms of the um, housing for older persons charges. I know that you have spoken to it um, both in the previous paper and this one. Uh, where to receive a, a more in depth briefing next week, 
and I support the direction that we're going in. But for me, there is, I guess, an element of risk in the sense that we're adopting the decisions today and then having the briefing the following week. So could you just remind me, the staff advice is that there is a range, and so there is still some flexibility within that range. I just want to make sure that we're demonstrating when we're making decisions that there is some flexibility there and that we're able to take all the information on board as part of that process. Through you, Mr. Mayor. In terms of flexibility, absolutely. So the the fact, so the, the fees and charges is not part of the long term plan. The revenue and financing policy is part of the long term plan, and that gives you a range between 55 and 80. So there's flexibility for you if you decide to change the, the fee. What's currently in the fees and charges is it's set at 80 percent, recovering 80 percent of the costs. So you have the flexibility to, to wind that all the way back to 55 percent. So if you change that, you're, it, it doesn't uh, invoke an amendment to the long-term plan. You're, act, you're acting in accordance with the provisions of the revenue and financing policy, which you've just adopted as part of the long-term plan. If you, um, if you decided to make changes to the fees and charges schedule that you accept today, we'd simply be retabling a revised fees and charges schedule. So you have the flexibility to make such changes. Um, you do need to be taken through the information next week, but you will find that the uh, impacts on the tenants are relatively minor. Nobody else? So can somebody move the recommendations? Councillor Buswell, 34 to 37 seconder. Councillor Holiday, debate, no. All those in favour say aye. Against, Aye. against um, Councillor Elliot, um, on the recorded. Carried. Right, we're down on page 390, recommendation the minutes of the Council meeting of 27th May 2021 be accepted as a true and correct record. Any issues on the minutes? No. So will somebody move that? Recommendation, Councillor Rob McCann, seconded by Councillor Hanford. You want to debate this? <laughs> All those in favour say aye. Aye. Again, carry it. Aye. Um, covering other items require public signatures. None, nothing else. Remains. Well done. And now close the meeting. Thank you very much. Timing is not too bad. Thank you. Thank you, Randall. Yeah, thank you. Mayor, Mr. Mayor.